This is why the Creator have not brought salvation and redemption yet. Because we're trying with all of our power to find ways out of tshuva. Trying to learn and trying to pray and trying to fly to Uman to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev and trying to go on different Kivret Tzadikim and trying to redeem ourselves with money and trying to make a frashat chala with groups of women and to cover our fingernails and to be so modest and like we're going to do whatever it takes not to do tshuva. Not to stand in front of the mirror and to say, it's disgusting. I was disgusting. It was horrible. We're going to do everything not to stand in that position. When that is the truth. And it's the truth that must be said. If it won't be said, if it won't be said, we're bending and twisting reality. And what will be the benefit of that? What you're going to earn? What you're going to gain? What you're going to gain? Separation from the Creator. Separation from blessing for good forever. Being under the shadows of your life, trapped under your fears, keep on having to be like a liar and always to keep on pulling that lie and to pretend again and to make another story and to avoid and to hide and to be scared and to be chased by your own fears. Why? Only because you haven't stopped. And look how one sin is dragging another in a way that is scary. If now you lied and someone asked you, did you lie? If you will say yes, that's where it ends. If you will say no, it will never finish. It will never finish because he will rebuke you. He will ask you. Reality will chase you again and again. And you now must be the most perfect liar in the world only because of one time that you were too scared to admit, yes, I lied. If you will choose to stand and to say, yes, I lied. Yes, I failed. Yes, I disappointed you. Yes, I was selfish. Yes, I was wrong. It will finish. Maybe they will tell you, you hurt me. It's the truth. You hurt them. Take responsibility. Maybe they will say, I'm disappointed of you. But in the same time, they will also be proud of you, of being able to say the truth. You will already start enjoying the reward of being truthful. Even in that low place of shame. But if you're going to choose to lie, they're going to ask you, but you're lying. You have to say again, no, I'm not. You are, no, I'm not. And you're going to keep on lying. And everyone is a new lie. It's a new sin that is carrying new sins after it. And it's a never ending story. Because in five years, it will come back to you. And if it's not going to come back from the same person, so your children will bring it back to the table. And then what you're going to do? You cannot run away. Because sheker tzaf al lie is floating above the water. The Creator cannot stand lies and He won't let it finish. It won't let it end. The Creator won't let it finish. And if you think that you were strong enough to hide it in this lifetime, you know what's going to happen in the world to come? That its name is the world of truth, olama emet. Sof davar, in the end of things, hakol nishma, every single thing will be heard. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about the most scariest moment of a liar. Everything will be heard. All your thoughts, all your plans, all your scams, all your feelings, everything will be heard on speakers. In front of all those people that you hid the truth from them, it will be heard out loud. Panic. It's time to get panic. <laughs> now it's time for that panic attack. And then that panic attack will bring you to understand the greatness of this world. That in this world, you can still fix. But in the world to come, there is nothing to do. Over there, it's not the world of grace. It's the world of judgment. Over there, when you reach that moment, and that's it, now we are counting. 
Everything is on the scale. The merits and the debts. The privilege and the mitzvot and the wonderful things that you did and the crimes and the sins and the lies. Everything is on the table and the table is wide and open and you cannot do tshuva. Over there, there is no place for tshuva. No one can do tshuva in heaven. Heaven is above time. There is no time to do tshuva. You cannot. That's it. It's a psak. It's a decision. It's a decree. Okay, now show us what you brought. Counting. You cannot fix over there. Means that's the most silliest thing in the world to decide to hide something forever. Because you're just bringing yourself to that point that from that point you cannot go back. It will hit you in the maximum power straight to your face. In front of your beloved ones. Into their hearts. To be disappointed from you in public, in heaven, in front of the Creator. The only way to fix it is right now. Is right now in this world as long as you're alive. Thank you. And when you do tshuva, immediately you are being redeemed. First of all, from your fears. Second, maybe more important, from keep on hurting your beloved ones. To do tshuva, it's to come back to Hashem. To come back to Hashem, it's to come back to the truth.